right, we're gonna read the fourth short story in Wipeout of the Wireless Weenies. Hopefully it's not too spooky. It's called Fabrications. Wellington Portsmouth III had more money than anyone else in our class. I knew this because he pretty much shoved it in our face every day. I'm not poor, but I have nice clothes and several pairs of shoes. And if I were poor, I'd be okay with that. There's more to life than stuff. Sunshine is free. So are books if you have a library card. But that wasn't fun. But it wasn't fun getting constant Wellington as wealthy reports throughout the day. He'd make a big deal out of pulling out his expensive gold pen out of the pocket of his shirt and opening his leather-covered notebook. It was bad enough when he mostly shoved off, showed off to the boys in our class, but then he started trying to impress all of us girls. Yesterday, as we were talking, taking our seats at the start of the day, he tapped the cuff of, Molly, of Holly Milborn's blouse and said, Polyester? She ignored him, but he didn't stop. He patted his chest. Silk. Pure silk. I never wear anything synthetic. He babbled a bit more about his linen pants and leather shoes. I tuned him out. After he took a seat, I told Holly, I like your clothes. Thanks, she said, but I could tell she was upset. After school, I went to see Dad at work. I can visit him anytime I want because he's the boss. He has his own company, but he just started it last year, so there's not a lot of money coming in. As I said, that's okay. Dad isn't trying to get rich. He's trying to help people by coming up with new kinds of medicine. He does this by splicing genes. In some ways, it's pretty complicated, but in other ways, it's amazingly simple. Consider this. Some people have a problem with high blood sugar. We all have bacteria in our stomachs, but not the kind of bacteria that eats sugar. So what if you could take the gene in the sugar-eating bacteria that give it a sweet tooth and give it a sweet tooth? and put that craving into the DNA of the bacteria in our stomachs. Now, they'd eat sugar. As Dad would say, that's an oversimplification. A lot of things could go wrong, and you have to be incredibly careful when you're making medicine or modifying genes. But I was going to splice up something that wouldn't be a danger to anyone. At least not a physical danger. Though, if my plan worked, it would produce some serious psychological damage. First, I had to give permission. Can I use the sequencer, I asked. Dad looked up from the eyepiece of his opto optical microscope. What for? Here's a moment of truth. I could hide, try to hide my plan from Dad. I'd feel guilty if I did that. Or I could tell him the truth and hope he didn't, he didn't stop me. I explained everything. Dad listened until I finished. He's good at that. He always lets me speak. He never interrupts. When I was done, he said... We absolutely have to run tests before anything leaves this building. It took me a second to realize the full meaning of this. So you're saying yes? It seems like a good learning experience for both of you. Yay! I'll admit I leapt up a bit and clapped my hands like a schoolgirl. Of course, I was a schoolgirl. So I guess it's okay to act like one once in a while. Then I grabbed a lab coat and switched to young scientist mode. Though this young scientist will admit... To letting out a giggle or two while she worked. It took a week to overcome all the snags that popped up, but it was worthwhile. When I finished, everything tested perfectly. Next Monday, I brought a small piece of cotton to school inside a corked test tube. I had a tiny moment of doubt as I walked toward the classroom. It is kind of mean, I thought, but then, right ahead of me, I saw Wellington standing by his locker. As Holly and two other girls walked past him, he sneered and said, what do you do? Sew that yourself from plastic bags? Then uh, they sped down the hall. Egyptian cotton, he said, tapping his shirt. And linen, he added, pointing to his pants. I pulled the cork from the test tube, grabbed the damp piece of cotton, and rubbed my fingers over it. Then I walked up to Wellington, touched his sleeve, and said, nice. How would you know, he said, pulling his arm away. You're dressed like you made your clothes from tossed out candy wrappers. I guess I don't know much of anything, I said as I fought back my grin and walked away from him. I'd done all the calculations earlier, but I couldn't help running the figures in my head just as I took my seat in homeroom. Happily, the school routine is pretty much the same every day. Five minutes after the late bell, the morning announcements started. It was hard to keep from staring at Wellington, but I knew there'd be nothing to see yet. There'd be a lot to see real soon. After greeting us over the speaker, the principal asked us to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. 
be patient, I told myself. Even, it happen, even if it happened after we sat, it would be good. But it would be awesome if it happened before that. With liberty and justice for all. As the last words rose from the class, I heard a startled shout from behind me. Hey! I turned toward the screamer, like the rest of the class. Unlike the rest of the class, I knew who was screaming. And even better, why he was screaming. What? Wellington was staring at his sleeve. It hung from his arm in shreds, as if he'd been mauled by a couple of wild dogs. It worked. I was excited enough to speak out loud, but smart enough to keep my voice to a whisper. Nobody noticed that I'd spoken. They were all watching Wellington's shirt fall apart. The bacteria I had created had a hunger for natural fibers. They reproduced rapidly and traveled only by physical contact. It also had a very short lifespan. Wellington's shirt was gone. His pants had started to disintegrate. Ah! He spun around, apparently unsure what to do. Spinning is a bad idea when your clothes are barely held together. Centrifugal force is pretty interesting. Stopping quickly after a spin is another bad idea, especially when one takes inertia into account. Wellington pretty much pantsed himself. Oh! At this point, he came to his senses enough to realize it would be a good idea to flee the room. As he shot, shot through the door, I noticed that his underwear must also be made of a natural fabric. But the less said about that, the better. By the time his mom brought him a change of clothes, all the bacteria would have died off. I'll admit, I almost felt bad for him, especially when he transferred to another school. But I felt good for the rest of us, until the new girl came who put everyone else down because she had the nicest hair. Hair would be tougher, especially since I had to come up with something that targeted just one person. That's not a problem. I loved a challenge. That one is an awful silly story, isn't it? And that is the end of that one. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.